Hi, everybody. Welcome to our SNADA webinar, Q2 2016 Shipping Rates at a Glance. My name is Catherine Barrios. I'm the CMO at SNADA, and I'll be your host for today. I'm joined by Patrick Berglund, our SNADA CEO, who will take you through today's webinar and also walk you through the numbers that we're currently seeing in the SNADA platform. Our webinar is scheduled for 25 minutes and a five-minute Q&A. Please ask your questions in the question panel on the right of your screen, and we'll answer those questions at the end of the webinar. If we move now to the agenda, and I'll quickly walk you through that as well. So um, we have over 200 people signed up for today's webinar, which is great. So we're extremely excited about that. Um, and that said, we have many new Seneda folks uh, registered, and therefore we will do a brief introduction of Seneda in the beginning of today's webinar. And then quickly we'll move to the Q2 highlights and some of our general observations for the quarter. Uh, next, then we will show you live, go live into the Seneda platform and show you the market movements for Q2 and some glimpses into Q3 for the following trade lanes. So you have those six that are listed there. And based on your feedback, we've added some more lanes from the last time we did this webinar in Q1. Um, so we hope that those are of interest for all the listeners that we have on today. Um, and then we'll follow, as I mentioned, with um, some closing remarks, and we'll do a Q&A, uh, and we'll close up the webinar at that point. So without much ado, then I move it over to Patrick to start the webinar. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you, Catherine. Appreciate it. So first, a short introduction to our company. Now, Senera is a Norwegian-based and headquartered company, and we're delivering a cloud-based software that allows our users to access benchmarks and in-depth market intelligence for containerized ocean freight. And we built a platform that is dynamic and it's delivering information on short and long-term price developments on a global scale in real time and on demand. We have a great number of companies connected to our platform ranging from SMBs to large enterprises in various industries. What really makes Senera a different and, and valuable is the amount of data we have. Our density grows daily and we today have more than 12 million contracted rates in our platform. This allows us to cover more than 60,000 trade routes around the world with the most accurate information available anywhere. We are not a shipper, a freight forwarder or a carrier, but a completely neutral company, which is key for us to have an independent and objective view on the industry. And it's also key for us to be able to service all stakeholders connected to the industry. So we source our data from either the shipper or the consignee, the one that owns and controls the price data that goes into our platform. They operate with, operate with a mix of long and short term contracts, which usually corresponds with their annual volume from 1,000 to 5,000 TU ship per year. Shippers, BCOs, tends to go on longer term contracts, hence uploading that information into our platform. But we also source our data from NVOCCs and freight forwarding companies, which would be FAK, name, bas name the count basket, uh, and name the count uh, rates. But whichever data we receive from any of these stakeholders, uh, that's, that feeds them into the platform, it all gets tagged so that our customers can segment out the data they would like to review to capture relevant market trends for them. So in essence, this is what we've done. We built a network that connects the buyers mainly and into, uh, into our platform, but also then later on, as I mentioned, the carrier and VOCCs. And what's really valuable about this network structure is that as it grows bigger, the more value it is for anyone involved. So let me show you actually an example of what I mean with this. So if we go back in time for, and choose a specific route here, Shanghai to Rotterdam for a 40 foot container, you will see a scatter plot as I populate this uh, picture with a Y axis in US dollars and then each and every price point as a line in the chart. The length of the line represents the contract duration. So you will see here shorter term prices and you will see some longer term prices. But as you can see back in 2011, the density of our database on this particular route for that container type wasn't rich enough for, to actually claim an average. And this is what has changed as the network has grown. Because as we went into 2012, 13, 
14, 15, and more and more companies joined the platform, we started to see a lot more data. And this is what is really behind everything we've built. And as this density grows, the accuracy and reliability of what is published is unprecedented. So with this as the background, I want to move directly onto our platform. And sorry, I want, to, I want to do some highlights first of how Q2 rates move for a few selected corridors and then show you how we utilize this data that we just looked at it live in our software. <clears throat> so first for short-term rates, if you look at the Far East Asia main ports into new, new North U Europe main ports routes, over Q2, uh, the second quarter isolated, the market increased for short-term rates with 21% for the average and 41% for the lower end of the market. For Far East Asia main ports going into North America South West Coast, there was the opposite. There was a drop of 90% on the average and 21% on the lower end. Now, Q, this particular corridor went into Q2 on the back of a GRI. So this means that it was a higher average in the 1st of April than it was going out of the quarter on June 13th. And we'll, we'll look at that in the platform in a bit. Now, for longer term rates, the same two corridors both uh, dropped. So the Far East Asia main ports into North Europe main ports dropped with 13% for the average and 17 for the lower end for longer term contracts. We expect to see a pickup as the shorter market has moved upwards in Q2. Then later on, our experience and based on our data, we see that the longer term market picks up and we'll be looking into, the, into Q3 some in this session as well. Far East Asia main ports into North America's southwest coast dropped with 32% on average and 45% uh, on the lower end. So with these main highlights for these particular two corridors, let's look at the platform live on these two first. So this is live in the Zenata platform. I've looked up Far East main ports into North Europe main ports, currently looking at a 40 footer, and I've zoomed in using the slider below here on the second quarter. Then you will be able to see the average rate for a 40 footer here. And as you can notice here, I've selected out short term data. This is key. Now, if I toggle on a couple of trade, uh, trend lines here, you will see that the market is picking, uh, clearly trending upwards. And you will also see that the two GRIs introduced in Q2 very, very much so declined immediately after the introduction. You've seen this, of course, in a pattern over the last couple of years as well. Now, if we increase and, uh, the timeline perspective on this corridor, you will get some more, a more, slightly more perspective uh, on the price development here. And this is taking the market back to beginning of December 2015. And then if I also increase it the other way around, you will see the latest introduced GRIs. So you see that the market hit a uh, bottom end in March. And if I move the mouse cursor here, you will see the actual US dollar value. And I can also select the spread of the market so that we can see how the lower end of the market has moved. Still keeping the trend lines uh, applied so you can see in which direction it's, it's trending. Now let's move on to the longer term. Uh, rates and see how those developed over the same period of time. Long-term contracts trended downwards in Q2, as you clearly can see, but as the shorter-term market picked up, the longer-term market is now starting to pick up a little bit later. And if I select contracts only negotiated and effective from date within the last three months, you will see a very different pattern. You will see that the increase started already in Q2 and are now into full effect. 
also if we go a few months into the future for these long-term contracts, we can actually see that this increase continues to into September, end of September as well. Now, if I then look at the Mediterranean, Far East Asia main ports into the Mediterranean, same selection, 40 foot container, short term market, and isolated on Q2. This shows the same development and trending as for North Europe main ports, but of course with different dollar values. It's also the same pattern and movements when viewing this corridor uh, on a prolonged time scale. So if I increase this one, we will again see the GRIs in, 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 in December, January, and how these GRIs that we're currently seeing stack up against the, the movements we saw during Chinese New Year. Switching on this corridor to long-term contracts, you will see exactly the same trend as for North Europe main ports, with the uptake starting in Q2 and continuing into July. Now, if you look at exports out of Europe, isolated again on Q2, short-term contracts and 40 foot container, you will see that the market has moved down from entering the quarter to exiting, exit, exiting it with an upswing during May. If we take a slightly longer time perspective on this one as well, you will see that again from the beginning of December until today, it's been a downward trending market on the export side. For long-term contracts, we can see some interesting movements in this corridor. So let me filter out long-term contracts. And let me also apply uh, trend lines and let's uh, take a look at the lower end of the market, which you will see is much more static. But if we look into, apologies, this is the downwards trending one, but if we look into what was negotiated and uh, what was effective over the last three months, then it's a slightly uh, slightly declining market here as well. But if I increase the timeline here towards the end of the year, going all the way until end December, the data in our platform indicates that this will bottom out towards October and then start slowly increasing again. This is what we can see from the current data in our platform. All right, so let's uh, let's change uh, ge geographical areas here and go to Far East main ports into North America Southwest Coast. So again, I'll filter out the short-term data. As you can see here, I've selected a 40-foot container and I've zoomed into Q2. Here's the reason why I, on our slides claimed that the market had dropped during Q2, because it went into the period, uh, into Q2 on the back of a GRI, that quickly diminished and dropped down to this US dollar level, and then a couple of GRIs helped picking up the market again. Now, if I increase the time span again, you will be able to see how the Chinese New Year period stacks up against the latest GRI developments that we see now in Q2 and also going into Q3. Let me also show you the, the spread of the market, the lower end of the market, and also the trend line so that you can see where, it, where it's indicating next movements. Now, this market for long-term contracts has developed slightly different. Let me clean up this a little bit and go into long-term contracts. You will see that there was a very clear dip after the majority, major or most common tender cycle that you have on this corridor. This dip came in Q2, and as the short-term markets pick up on this corridor as well, we would expect to see some of the same patterns for as we did for Far East to Europe, but then with a delay according to the respective tender cycle, as the European one is tendered accordingly to the calendar year, and this North American one mainly in, in April, May. So if you look into the future for what we have in the uh, platform 
as per today and September and apply the trend lines, you will see that the data behind signals that there will be an uptake in also the long-term market here. If we then look at the other, uh, the East Coast, US North East Coast more precisely, you will see a lot of the uh, same development and trending as for Southwest Coast Corridor that we just reviewed. But of course, again, with different US dollar values. It also has the same patterns and movements when viewing this corridor on a prolonged time scale. So again, you will see the Chinese New Year and the GRIs that will, will, came into play around that time for the short-term data. And again, showing the spread of the market and the trending of it. Long-term market moving correspondingly to the West Coast based on the data and same goes for into the future. So if I select here and go into end September, I will see the same flattening out and again I can apply the trend lines to tell, which tells me that the underlying data signals that there is coming price increases. Those are the main corridors I wanted to go through in today's session, but I also picked out three other ones that we mentioned uh, in our slide deck, and I want to highlight the key, some key findings for those corridors. And the first one was exports out of uh, North and South West Coast into Far East main ports. So I've selected here 40 foot container, long-term contracts, isolated view on the second quarter of this year, and it clearly shows a declining and even more so uh, a declining more market, and even more so when increasing or choosing a longer time scale. Also on the export side. What's interesting in this corridor is that if you filter out only the contracts that's been negotiated and came into effect over the last three months, you will see a very different picture. You will see a clear uptake on this corridor. So those who's currently running tenders now and are tying in their bids will see this uh, reflected in their, in their bids. Now another corridor I wanted to show is the North Europe main ports into US North East Coast. I've selected long-term contracts, 40 foot containers and isolated the view on this second quarter that we're covering today. And this quarter clearly uh, shows the same pattern as for the US West Coast export into Far East with a declining market, but when drilling further down into the data, a different data pattern also appears here. So I, again, I'm going to select what's effective over the last three months, and you will see that uh, it looks like the market is bottoming out and then with the trend lines, I will see that the average moves upwards. The last corridor I briefly want to highlight in today's session is the Far East main ports into South America East Coast for the short-term market. So to change things up, I've selected a 20-foot containers here. And this one is in particular interesting because the inc increase is so aggressive. So it's currently isolated on Q, the view is currently isolated in the second quarter, and if I prolong that view, you will see how significantly this market has moved upwards, starting in end of February, where you, we had an all-time low in this corridor, and this completely has changed this corridor around, because the average price for a 20-footer in December was 91 US dollars, while today the average is closer to 3,000 US dollar. So there, these are the most significant movements uh, on any corridor we've seen lately in our platform. And that was it for the live demonstration. So we then move into the Q&A part of this session. And I see that there's a lot of questions pouring in. So let me let me try to get through some of these. All right.
right. So first, there's a question a question about uh, data density. So let me actually use the platform to show you how we deal with that. So this, what we're looking at here, is the starting point, and you will see one year historical perspective is selected as a default. And in our platform, we op operate with these rate density triggers. So you'll see explained as dots, and we then explain how many price points are behind each dot. So if there's a chart with less than 10 contracts, there would be one that dot. If there's uh, two dots, there's between 10 and 100. And if there's three dots, there's more than 100 and less than 1,000 and so forth. So this is also always updated. And if I then drill down, let's say I go to Shanghai to Rotterdam and then select a shorter time period, let's say beginning of this year, you will see that there is now four dots, which means that there is more than a thousand uh, prices behind this chart, but less than 10,000. 10, So the more you drill down and the more segmentation it is, these dots will change and, and uh, update you on how much density uh, behind, behind the chart there actually is. Then there's a question about short and long-term uh, contracts. So what we've done is that we've decided that anything, is, anything that's less than a month of validity is a short-term contract. So that means that we have companies that have, have weekly prices or they have a freight forwarding company as their supplier and they have a monthly price that they change four times or two times. And uh, we have larger volume BCOs that are, typically have annual contracts, which would then fall in the long-term bucket. But what we've done for the long-term contracts is that we've selected more than three months. And the reason for this is that there's a lot of BCO shippers that have, has, have annual contracts but with a floating bunker adjustment. So in order to capture the movements and these one-year deals that adjusts every quarter, more than a quarter is the selection that we've gone for. Then there's this question about short-term raise based on spot market. So. <clears throat> This is a conversation that I typically have with uh, shippers I'm dealing with about what is really the difference between a short term and a spot spot uh, market, because we have companies on our platform that re uh, requests new prices every time they do a bo booking. To me, that would be the spot market. But then on the other hand, you will have the same type of companies that requests a weekly price, and and we've decided to bulk these into less than a month of validity because we we can't find correlating differences in that kind of prices. Right, let me find some more questions here. Um, a lot of questions is circling a lot around different corridors. Now, for me to draw, drill into all of these different corridors, I would actually recommend that we reach out back and showcase one and one uh, on these. And we'll pick up these com uh, questions after the, the session. So if there's specific corridors you want to have a look at, we will set you up with a one-on-one -on -one session uh, on those. Now, there's one question uh, regarding the, uh, the rates that we receive. Uh, whether it's including surcharges like buff, cough, uh, low sul sulfur surcharge, and so forth. So the high-level answer, easy answer, is that yes, we do include all surcharges as long as it's uh, applicable from between one port to the next. So we have a whole set of met methodology pu published on our web pages, but the, the simple explanation is that we, we include all surcharges, but we also deal with THC costs on either origin and destination side with a set uh, methodology framework. So let me find some more questions here. Well, 
one question is whether you get the presentation of the, the webinar and uh, that's available to, to download and our marketing folks will take care of that. And then there's a question about whether this is a regular session uh, that we do every quarter. Um, so yes, we do this uh, on a quarterly basis uh, as per now, and uh, we're covering slightly different corridors for uh, every time we do this in order to cover as much of the requests that we've received uh, in the interim of these sessions. Yes, so then there's a, a question around freight forwarding data, uh, which is a very good question and one that I'm uh, very enthusiastic about. So the key thing to understand is that we, when we allow a freight forwarder onto our platform, we are able to segment out their data from the rest. But the most important thing to understand is that they are actually providing their named account contracts mainly into the platform, which basically allows uh, an increased volume of data as they might have 10 customers that they do this together with. So it's a very beneficial way for a freight forwarding company to actually showcase to their customers how competitive they are in, in this volatile landscape. Which also means that the other BCOs and um, shippers connected to the platform gains extra value from the data that comes in from that side as well. Then there's a question whether we're doing the same for air freight. and. Uh, what I can say is that that is probably the most requested feature that we have uh, and we're working on some ideas on how we potentially could uh, do something with air freight uh, within let's say uh, a year or so. I want to be cautious about this but obviously it's the same technology and the same use base that could be used to, to also publish these indexes for air freight. Okay, I think we've reached now the end of our time. Thank you everybody for, for attending and for all your questions and thank you Patrick a lot for walking through and giving us a thorough uh, insight into what we're seeing in the Sineda platform. Um, if you have any questions and you want to learn more, please feel free to reach out to us and as Patrick mentioned there was a lot of questions about specific corridors and information related to those. We encourage you to reach out to us. One of our experts will uh, can do a one-on-one -on -one presentation for you and do an entire analysis on your ocean freight spend. Um, that said, as mentioned, we will send out the recording to everyone who has attended and also to everyone who registered. Please feel free to share that with your colleagues and, and pass it forward to anyone of interest. Um, we do hold these webinars approximately every other month. I mean, the quarterly webinars, we have them every quarter, but we also will hold the other topics. Um, all of those are also recorded and you can find those on our website to download on demand. And I encourage you to follow us via our blog to stay up to date with what's happening in the shipping and logistics world. We have um, quite regular blog posts there. So please feel free to subscribe to those and you'll get an instant message as soon as we post a new blog post. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.